congratulations on the show. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Um, first and foremost, let me ask you how you first got involved and what it was about the story and everything that, that uh, made you want to get involved. You know, I've been involved in this project for so long. When it, was, uh, when it first got commissioned, I got brought in and I got this script sent to me. I had so many scripts sent and this really jumped out. And I was like, I've got to be involved in this. And I think one of the biggest attractions was, yes, we're in this amazing place in Norway, but we're also in my hometown of Yorkshire where we were filming as well. So to go back home and film there was great. Tell me about a little bit about your character and how you first got involved yeah. with this. Well, I play June McDaniel. She's a 16, um, naive, innocent, I guess the title says, looking forward to her runaway life with her boyfriend, love of her life, only to be derailed by discovering she's a shapeshifter. So that's where we meet her in the show. This is a, a very you. cool event. You must be delighted that it's you've got such a special screening and everything. Still a little bit like yeah. overwhelmed. Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah <laughs> it's, amazing. It's, it's amazing. So yeah. let, me, let me ask you how the project first came about and how you got involved and, and, and how it came to fruition through Netflix. So the project was born in a beer garden in North London. Oh, about cool. Bottom of a pint glass. It's yeah. where all the best ideas come from. Best ideas come that's from. right. Guinness and Estrella. We thank them for everything. <laughs> um, I used to be Simon's agent and we just had a lot of creative chemistry working together in that dynamic and then when I left to become a full-time writer we started meeting up just to kind of talk about ideas throw things around yep. we have I would say very different tastes and instincts but when they wise. meet they really meet and this felt Boom. like an idea that really just met and we got quite obsessive about it and then several points later yeah. over a course of a few weeks the idea just just developed just developed so we took it to first script we sold it to new pictures um, who saw the potential we then developed it with them and Netflix you know, it was on our mind as the ideal home. We didn't think for a million years that we'd actually get it there. Um, and they, they saw what New Books did seem. And then we got the phone call. And then we got the phone <laughs> call, yeah. I was just talking to the writers and they were telling me about the, the genesis of the project in a North London pub somewhere. They came up with this crazy idea and then a few months later you were involved. What was it about their, their story and their ideas that kind of made you want to get involved? Uh, well, I guess it's just the, the feeling of originality, you know? Just sort of felt... Uh, uh, it felt original and it, and, it, and it really felt like their understanding of these characters and their, their way of presenting them felt genuine and interesting, complex, yeah. So I'm always drawn to characters that are well realised and, you know, I think, I think it just felt like something that I could imagine straight away, yeah. It's a TV show, but it has such a huge scope. What was it like being on a, f a show like this? Because Netflix yeah. is so good at giving directors you know, personal projects and exciting yeah. projects. I mean, what was it like being in amongst that environment? I feel like I'm going through the emotions right now as I'm speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Standing next to the guy right there, you know? Um, I think, um, I mean, from the get-go, immediately it was, it was slightly overwhelming for me because I'm, I'm still uh, new in terms of my journey as an actor coming up, but I feel like... Like you said, Netflix give this uh, creative freedom for new talent, and whether you know we're in front of the camera or behind the camera, I feel like we have the the freedom to express ourselves. And I feel like uh, just playing Harry Polk in the show, I was able to make the character my own, and it took away uh, any sort of pressure. I just was able just to find you know his nuances and 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 trust in the writing and just. Harry. It's an, an amazing script. I was just saying to your director about how, how vast it is and how, how big it feels. I mean, did you get a sense of that when you were making it? That this was such a big project? Absolutely. I mean, the, the scope of it was unbelievable. Even just the journey that all of these characters go on, it's not just, you know, the, the leads. It's every single character has an incredible journey. You know, they are very different from, you know, beginning to end. And that, I think, really adds to the sense of scope. But not only that, that it's the issue that we're tackling is so big and is so vast and has so much sort of, um, space for for creativity within it. The idea of shape-shifting, the, the question of, of uh, who am I and what's my purpose is a big question that is really exciting to be able to explore. Absolutely. And then just, just quickly on Netflix, I mean, it's such a great platform for, for shows like this. It's such a big audience. You must be delighted that, that it's going to be seen by so many people across across the world on such a great platform. Oh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be seen by, I don't know, what is it, like 100 million? Or something. Like that, Don't yeah. say that, I'm going to start panicking. <laughs> I'm going to be like, have I done this right or not? But uh, yeah, it's going to be amazing and uh, the promotion's been incredible and I'm really looking forward to everybody getting to watch it. It feels like quite an expensive show. I mean, if you were to make this a movie, you might have had to make it a budget or anything else, but with Netflix as a great canvas, it feels much, much bigger. I mean, uh, was that a challenge, trying to make it as big as that? Because it seems like quite a big 
event. It, it was a, it was a huge, a huge event, a huge show to do. I think there were loads of challenges that people don't expect. I mean, one of the biggest things was we got sent to Bergen, which is I think the rainiest place in Europe in the month of rain. And uh, the place is beautiful, but after 48 hours of solid rain, it really gets here. So there were a lot of lot of challenges like that, and we were trying to create a real look and something different and um, pushing that on the budgets and everything we had and just logistically. Um, it was tough, but I think we got there and I think we've got a show that looks very, very different and very unique that's going to stand out on Netflix. Yeah. Netflix is such a great platform for, they're taking on movies these days, but also the shows and they're allowing their shows to grow over a few seasons. Yeah. You know, Stranger Things and Riverdale and all these amazing shows. You're at the start of this journey, but are you hopeful that you get to go back and, and kind of expand the mythology and, and go back to these characters for a second? Uh, we season? have a thousand million ideas we'd love to explore. And, and Netflix is a great place to do it. I mean, they, they really encourage us, you know, go there, guys. Keep making the show that you, you pitched to us, so it's great. I think that's right. I think having that space for the storytelling over eight episodes in a format as well where you're not needing to recap all the time and you have that fluidity to kind of really keep the pace going, what you can accomplish over one series can only get better and more exciting over a number of series. So we're always talking about it, but for now we're just focusing on series one. We yeah, hope yeah. it finds you know, the right home, a, a passion at home, and yeah. that's People all we can ask for. You've played a, an array of characters, or Marvel villains and LA Confidential and so many others in between. What was it about this particular character that, that felt, felt original to you and thought that it was something new that you'd get your teeth into? Uh, well, I think I think in relation to the entire story, you know, he was a man who's trying to get to the bottom of what this condition is that these women are um, suffering, and you know, but also there's an ego involved there where he is, you know, he's trying to make a name for himself as well, and but just doing it in a very particular kind of way, needing to sort of isolate himself and isolate, you know, these women so that he's not he's not under the the, the pump of the authorities, and you know, probably. Uh, probably in deeper water than he than he's prepared to admit. How did the project first come about for you? Because I imagine with Netflix there's a, there's a there's sort of audition process yeah. involved. I mean, how, how long ago was that and how quickly did you get involved when it first kind of filmed, the filming began? Yeah, no, the audition process, it began for me, I think, last year. I think it was maybe February. And um, for me, it, I, I got cast in June, I think it was, roughly. I think I got the dates right. But um, it was, yeah, it was um, an interesting uh, process because I guess ultimately it's about finding two actors who have chemistry and um, and not just that you know who, who we believe them to be Harry and June and um, you know if it's right it's right and I feel like when me and Sorica did it you know it clicked and you know I, I cut to a year later we're here at the premiere <laughs> I mean it's a lot of these kind of projects that, that get made into movies and you have two hours over this you have eight yeah, episodes yeah. ten episodes and more hopefully to come I mean it must be great to, to immerse yourself in a character for such a long amount of time yeah it really is I mean it was my first experience of doing it um, I've never had a job this long or this intense before and it is it's a very different beast tackling eight hours worth of a person's life um, and it's but it's fantastic. It's really uh, it's a gift for an actor to be able to sort of live with these people for seven months worth of filming that we had. Um, and I mean, you work with some amazing actors. There's two young actors at the at the top of the show who are new to it. I mean, how did they impress you? And, and they, they seem like they've got such a great career in front of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Sorka and Percy are both very mature and you know really interested in in learning and you know just just lovely, genuine people. So. Um, you know, there was no, uh, there was no sort of um, big egos getting in the way or anything like that. Just you know, in fact, the whole team were, were really delightful. Yeah. When you were when you were kind of in, in the pub in North London, and everything else, I can't imagine the name Guy Pearce. You know, but when you get someone like him, as well as these great young actors, uh, I mean, it must be so exciting to have people like that on, on board. I think so. I think as well. You know, we're new writers. You know, this is our first show yep. that we've ever made, and I think to have actors like. Sorka and Percy sort of, you know, growing up on screen as we're kind of coming of age as writers yep. at, the, at the same time in the company of Guy Pearce and us all feeling that we're holding our own and challenging each other and um, it feels it feels really It's nice. just amazing when, when an actor like Guy Pearce reads your script and says, yes, I like it, but I get it. And then he comes on board and does something with it you never imagined. Yeah. So back in those days sat in a pub, we didn't see that, but you bring someone like that on board and it just takes on a life of its own. It's just really 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 thrilling
really yeah. thrilling. But you have the great guy Pearson there yes, as well. I mean, just all right, of these, he's just behind me, stalking me. Yeah. Um, it must be great to, to be with such young actors, but also seasoned actors, and someone like him where you can learn so much of. Absolutely. And I mean, I didn't go to drama school, so in a way, this is my training as an actor, is, is being around these incredible people who are working at the top of their game, not just him, but the incredible um, Scandinavian actors that we had are all so, so gifted. And to watch them work and to see their process and the integrity that they bring to it is just so inspiring. <laughs> Netflix is such a great platform. There's so many amazing shows yeah. that they've got. You know, something like Stranger Things or Riverdale, where yeah. you, you, you get to go back to these characters for episodes, maybe 16 episodes, and everything else. I mean, it, it, is it daunting that so many people are going to see it? Because you know, you put a film out there, some yeah. people would see it, sometimes not. Whereas with Netflix, it's out for everybody to, to get their hands on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't think so. I feel like with every show that is on Netflix, I feel like there's a uh, strength in the fact that every show is its own show. And I don't feel like even the fact that this is a sci-fi genre based show, it's, it's the same as Stranger Things. I feel like we're allowed to be the innocents and and I think fans are, and, and audiences are gonna see that at home and um, and, and people are gonna, and, and the great thing about being with Netflix is that it goes to 190 countries around the world where it's gonna find its own audience and new audiences across the world that you never thought would, would buy into a show like this or, or have an, or for me as an actor to have an opportunity to, to be broadcast in those kind of countries as well. So I feel like, um, you know, no, I feel like, yeah, it's just open to, to, to the product can be what it can be. Yeah. I just finally, I want to ask very quickly about Mary Queen of Scots. We've seen the trailer, Saoirse and Margot Robbie going at each other. What was it like on that set? And there's a lot of talk about Oscars and everything else. Can you, can you see that those two would be up for uh, awards? Because the trailer was very, very powerful. It's hard for me to say at this point. It's too early, yeah. I've only seen as much as you've seen. So. Oh, a trailer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your no time. Worries. Absolutely pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!